Hello and welcome back to day 31 of how to fix the world in 80 days and today's subject is one of my favorites which is nation building. Now that could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people so here's my quick explanation I guess. In the world I think we all agree that there are developed nations and there are developing nations. Now we can argue over who fits into which category but basically there are poor countries and there are richer countries. So nation building would be the idea that we can take funds from the rich countries, give it to the poor people to help them increase their standard of living. Now this all seems pretty great, right? I mean, who could disagree with that? But the problem is, did anyone actually ask these poor countries what they really want? We have a tendency to think that because we're so awesome, every country must want to be just like us, right? Not so much. Now this might come as a shock to some of you, but not every country's idea of success involves living in mansions, driving around in Ferraris, and sniffing coke off of strippers' tits. Take a country like Bhutan. They're a mostly agrarian society, and their economy is so underdeveloped that they actually suck up more carbon than they put out. Wow. And if you saw a picture of these people, you'd be like, oh my god, we need to save them. Aww. But the truth is, if you ask most people from Bhutan, they're perfectly happy living the way they are, they're a very proud people, and there should be nothing wrong with that. Now that's not to say that the idea of nation building is useless, it's quite the opposite actually. Not every country is going to be like Bhutan. There are a ton of countries out there who are absolutely struggling and they are crying out for foreign intervention. For example, in just one year, Palestine asked the United Nations for $571 million in foreign aid. What? That's a lot of money. I mean, we'd like to think that these countries will at some point be able to iron out their problems and that we won't have to actually intervene with foreign countries affairs. But when you're dealing with issues like food, medicine, housing, these are not things that can wait. People are literally dying on the spot and we can do something about it. So the question is, what can we do about it? And historically, the only people who can really intervene in nation building would be governments, big business and international NGOs. And to be fair, you gotta give them a bit of credit here. I mean, if you look at the top foreign donor lists, you're gonna see names like China, the United States, and Germany. So it makes sense that the biggest economies would be giving the most out in foreign aid. You can also look at big business. For example, Google has allocated a billion dollars over five years to give out in grants. You can also look at international NGOs. I chose Médecins Sans Frontières. They're working in over 70 different countries, and every year they're turning over $1.5 billion in support for emergency medical aid. This is all good stuff, right? Well, yeah, of course it's all good. But unfortunately, that's only half the story of nation building. So for every great story of success, there's another of corruption, of greed, of leaving the country in a worse off place than when they got there in the first place. For many people, nation building has become the modern equivalent of colonialism or mercantilism. In fact, some studies estimate that 45% of foreign aid isn't really free, it's conditional. So let's say you receive money from the Canadian government. You don't get to do whatever you want with that money. You have to buy Canadian stuff. Or next time we go to the United Nations, you're going to have to vote Canada's way. If you want to see an even more crystal clear example, think about it this way. Every year, Africa receives about $30 billion in foreign aid. But every year, $192 billion leaves Africa, $35 billion of which is alleged to be in some kind of tax shelter. Aww. So not only did the money that you donated to help some poor person not get to the person you actually wanted to help, it very likely ended up in the hands of some government crony who stashed it off in the Cayman Islands. On the bright side, there's a ton of solutions available from strengthening government institutions to more oversight on foreign aid. But the problem with a lot of these solutions is that you have to rely on the very same system that created the need for nation building in the first place. We've seen this same script play out way too many times. Instead of the money getting to the hands of the people who actually need it, you'll see it go through the president and his government, and you'll see those very same people flying off in private planes, going off to their French villas with their private Swiss bank accounts, and their mistress, whose tits barely made it through baggage claim. So if you really want to make sure that your money ends up in the right place, what should you do? So the way I see it, the real way to do nation building isn't these massive spending programs with the cute little press conferences. The real way to do it is micro-funding. So instead of giving some shady government like a billion dollars, why don't we go visit like 10,000 African villages, ask them what they really need, and just buy it for them. Remove the bureaucracy, remove the opportunity for corruption, and just help these people directly. 
The other beautiful thing about microfunding is it gets the people who are actually struggling with the problems directly involved with the solutions. So instead of asking someone flying around on a private plane with an army of assistants about how it feels to walk two hours to get fresh water, I'll just ask the person who's walking two hours to get fresh water. It's time we stop telling the developed world what to do. We, in many cases, suffer from the same problems they do. Corruption, greed, inequality. I know these things. And if we don't listen to what they want, we're just gonna keep repeating the same problems over and over and over again. So I don't know how to fix nation building, but I can tell you that if I really wanna solve it, the first place I would look is the people who are actually struggling with it. So that's just my opinion. What are yours? Do you think nation building is working? Can we trust governments to allocate the resources properly? And perhaps most importantly of all, what do you think your role is in nation building? So that's all for now. Please let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time when day 31 I talk about world domination.